I would like to talk to you today about three reasons why no Christian can be in the military. Um, I'm not saying no Christian has ever been in the military. Nobody in the military uh, can get saved or things like that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there are some reasons today, the modern military, if you're a Christian, if you're saved, you can't stay in that thing. Okay, And if you are a young person thinking about going into the military, I'm going to give you three reasons from the scriptures why you need to seriously consider that decision and say, uh, no, I guess I don't think that would be the Lord's will. All right. Um, and I just want to say, I don't hate anybody that's in the military. I don't, I don't have hatred for, uh, oh, some guy served in the military, he's a veteran, and I hate his guts for it or something. Not at all. But there's a lot about the military that doesn't line up with this book right here. And uh, those things need to be brought out. And there's a lot of worship of military veterans and military stuff here in America done on purpose because of Hollywood, part of the propaganda division of the Pentagon. And you can actually look that up. They actually have a, a uh, office of, you know, for Hollywood propaganda at the Pentagon. Um, it's right there. It's very interesting. But Hollywood has been used as a tool by the government to propagandize uh, the American people into thinking that we always do good with our military. And our, uh, what our military has done in the last 100 years shows just how corrupt this nation really is. Um, there's not been a just war in over 100 years. I can say that without any fear of contradiction. Um, the wars that we've gotten into were all foreign entanglements, first of all, which we're not supposed to get into according to the Constitution, but, um, but they were also fought very foolishly and cost lives of countless American men um, that were quite needlessly sacrificed on the field of battle. Um, there are weapons that have been used, depleted uranium being, of course, the most well-known, that uh, not only poisons the battlefield, but also poisons the soldiers that are there. Uh, I can't tell you how many uh, things I've read, seen, whatever else, accounts of, of soldiers that just, it's just messed up. You know, they have a term, term for it, um, which I'm not going to say, but, uh, you know, it means that things are really messed up beyond all recognition. Uh, yeah, there's been many times that soldiers could have gone in, the American military could have gone in and defeated an enemy, but because of little political workings and things behind the scenes, they keep the battle going and they, they end up costing American soldiers their lives and terrible things happen in the, in the battle. The war continues. Um, war is about making money, by the way, if you haven't figured that out. And I'll get into some more of that as we continue. But reason number one, okay, no man can serve two masters. That's what the Lord says. Now, lost people, this is not a message for them. I'm not telling lost people you shouldn't go into the military, although there will be some good instruction there. But I'm saying we're mainly talking about if you are born again, if you are saved, you need to understand what the military is about. And it's not the same thing, by the way. I know that I know the minds of military people and they'll say, well, you know, what about a job? What about working in a factory job or a construction job or whatever else? You know, well, uh, you're not forced to be there. Okay, you can walk away at any time. You can't do that from the military. Okay. So, but you know, I've been seeing some guys that are that are in the comments section that are current active duty and whatever else, or in the military, spend time in the military, whatever, and they're advising young men to join the military. I have a big problem with that. You're going against the Word of God when you do that. Let me show you. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Jesus Christ here, speaking in this passage, says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is your King James Bible word, one of the words that means money. Kind of like if you had a god of money, it would be named mammon. All right. Um, so the Lord is saying there, you can't serve two masters. And you'll see that. You will see if you want to make a lot of money, you can't really serve Jesus Christ. It's just that simple. 
You have to start to go against the counsels of Scripture and the Word of God if you want to make a huge amount of money in life. Just how it is. And if you do make, if, if you would say, uh, have some kind of a, a great man of God that did have wealth, you'll see that they give it away. You'll see that they're, they're always helping people and using it for this and that. A lot of the men in the 1800s, um, late 1800s, early 1900s, when, when God was really blessing a lot of uh, businessmen in this country. And I do believe that there were some that were saved. And they were you know, quite wealthy. My own grandfather, uh, Milton Denlinger, he was a fairly wealthy man. And um, the Lord blessed him. But it's because he gave a lot of money away. He helped people with that money. It wasn't, and I mean, he he lived a very simple life. Believe me, he drove a, a Plymouth Reliance, I think, is what the car was. And before that, he had an AMC Eagle, and he drove that around for many, many years. My grandfather did not live a very opulent lifestyle, and it wasn't until after he died, and, and I heard some of the financial talk going on between my father and his siblings, that I realized, oh wow, you know, Grandpa actually had a lot of money. I didn't even know it. So. If you want to have, if mammon wants to, if you want mammon as your God, money as your primary purpose in life, you're not going to serve the Lord. And if you're going to serve the Lord, then it can't be about money. Pretty interesting. So what's this have to do with the military? We'll get back to that. First Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 through 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You get military veterans that have been in actual combat. You know what they've had happen to them? They've been pierced through with many sorrows. I have the books. I don't think I have my, my military books here yet, but, you know, they're still in my other library uh, back home. But um, here in the office, I don't, I don't have a whole lot of them, but I've read the stories. Vietnam, World War II, Desert Storm, I've read a lot of these guys' stories. And uh, they're pierced through with many sorrows. They see buddies, they, they see guys that they grew up with that came into the military with them, got out of high school, went into the military, and they see them get killed on the battlefield. It's terrible. Why are they there? Why did they go to the battlefield? What was Vietnam all about? What was World War II all about? What was the Korean War all about? What's Afghanistan about today? What's Iraq about? All the other police actions that America's involved in, what's it about? Money. Don't tell me it isn't. It's about power, geopolitical power, restructuring things and moving things around and whatever else. It's not, hey, there's bad guys over there. Let's go kill the bad guys and then we'll be free and, and have peace again. <laughs> uh, that's what they put out there for the sheep to consume that. That's not the truth. And you study it and, and research it, you'll find that out. Verse 11, But thou, O man of God, flee these things. Are you saved, young man? Are you a man of God? You are, if you're saved, if you're born again, you're to flee these things. Flee it. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Does the military encourage meekness? No. Fight the good fight of faith. Can you do that in the military? I don't think so. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. And we're going to, going to be continuing here, so stay tuned. We're, I'm going to be getting into some of this stuff here. Um, but war is about money. I don't think I have, I'm just trying to think if I have some of my books here. I know most of my military ones are at home, but I'm just looking here. Um, I should have brought some of them but uh you know the, the one in particular was written by a james bogue writes he was a green beret commander in vietnam and he talked about the the uh golden triangle over there and um the 
heroin trade that was going on, Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, I think is what it was, and how he was, you know, he went back to get prisoners of war because essentially there were prisoners of war, missing in action, uh, prisoners of war, MIA POW. You'll see the black flags with the guy's head like this, you know, down, and it'll have barbed wire around it and whatever else, and we'll ne we will never forget or whatever, MIA, MIA POW. Um, what they don't tell you is there were over 2,000 soldiers that were MIA POW after Vietnam. And the government pulled out and just whoop, left them there. And the, the Vietnamese, uh, North Vietnamese, you know, country there said, uh, we'll give them back to you, but you have to pay some reparations for coming over here and messing up our country. And the United States government said, keep them. <laughs> I have the documents to prove it. I do in my collection here. Uh, they just leave them there. Why? Uh, well, because the whole thing was about drugs. The Vietnam War was about drugs. The, the heroin and the opium and everything else. And uh, James Bogue Wrights was in the Vietnam War. He's the guy that they made the Rambo movies after. He was called Rambo. That was his nickname. Killed over, I think, 400 you know, confirmed kills or something crazy like this. I mean, super soldier. A very elite soldier. And he wrote about it in a book. And he was financed to go over and try to find the POWs. He found some, and he was trying to get them out, and there was connections in the government that said, no, we don't want that to happen. And he went back in and talked to General Kun Sa. Again, I have the video of that in my collection, him talking with him and, 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 uh, and how that they were dealing with heroin and everything and dealing with the U.S. State Department. And um, uh, Richard Armitage was one of the point men that he dealt with, and also George Bush Sr., a uh, big CIA guy. The CIA is intimately involved in the drug trafficking and things and the whole black ops and they have to find it's the black ops through drug, you know, operations and, and all this. I mean, it's just, you study that, it's, it's just so corrupt and so crooked. And you're part of it if you're in the military. Maybe not directly, but indirectly, you're part of that system. And Afghanistan, opium production is way down before 9-11. 9-11 happens, American troops come in, and all of a sudden, well, we have to uh, kind of, you know, help the people, the local people out with their economy, and their economy is opium, you know, flowers, so, you know, we have to just, you know, help them get in there and, you know, cut the little poppy flower or the little seed pod thing and get scraped the sap out, and then you cook it down, you get heroin, you know, essentially. That's used by the uh, pharmaceutical industry. We have to do it. We have to because we're trying to rebuild the economy in Afghanistan, and then they can go from raising heroin for us and big pharma to uh they can grow wheat in the future and make biscuits or something <laughs> yeah okay and uh then we'll get into the oil thing in iraq and all the other stuff it's about money it's about money and you join up with the military you can't say hey wait a second here this i see what's going on here wait a second why you're a soldier snap to attention yes sir you know, stand at attention, you know, you're told what to do. Uh, hey, if, hey, soldier, if you know what's good for you, you'll keep your mouth shut about what you just saw here. Ye yes, sir. Did you see anything? No, sir, I did not, sir. You don't want to be court-martialed, do you? You gave up your rights when you joined this military. You think the Lord wants you to do that? Well, yeah, Lord, I did see some uh, drug trafficking and I did see some other corrupt things, but I have to keep my mouth shut because I'm under orders. Really? Hmm. It's kind of interesting. Isaiah 59. Back to the Old Testament. Isaiah 59, verses 1 through 8. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. His ear is there, that he's listening for the prayers of sinners coming to him and calling upon him to be saved. All throughout the Bible. Okay? Uh, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, and that he will not hear. Hmm. 
For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue hath muttered perverseness. Hello, military. Uh, basic training. You're going to get the guy cussing you out, the DI or whatever, drill instructor there, the, the whatever, all these superiors and things are going to come in. They're going to humiliate you and break you down psychologically. Their lips will utter perverseness. And what do you do as a Christian? I mean, you know, what would you think of me if I said this? Hey, I was in the store the other day and I'm standing there and all of a sudden this guy just comes up and he gets about this close to my face and he just, just starts screaming into my face and profanity and everything and I just stood there. I took it. And then he punched me in the stomach or he knocked me down and I got back up again and I let him do it some more. I'll tell you what, I was a real man when I went through that. You say, no, you'd be a coward, Brian. But I could tell you I did it when I joined the military. And then I'm a real man because I'm a soldier now. I got through my Marine Corps training, my Army, whatever. And I just stand there and I let some guy scream in my face and blaspheme my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I've, I've heard the quotes. So don't, don't play little games. And, well, they don't. Oh, I've heard. I've read the way that military people talk. Don't even talk to me about it. I've known plenty of soldiers and everything else. You wouldn't catch me dead in the military. Some guy saying, you know, Jesus bleeping Christ as a profanity type of a thing and you just have to stand there. If you're born again, what do you think would happen? You're in basic training and the guy says, bleep, 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 and uses the Lord's name in vain and you say, uh, excuse me, I don't appreciate that. You just blaspheme my God. You think he's going to say, oh, I, I'm sorry, soldier. I'm sorry about that. No, he'd, it would get even worse. He'd make fun of you. He'd mock you. Why would you go into that as a Christian? Why would you subject yourself to that? And by the way, let me just say this. Oh, I'm a soldier. I'm tough, man. I've been through the military. I'm, I'm tough and everything else. I can do push-ups. I, I had to do all this other stuff. You were putting this, put into something where they mind-controlled you to break you down so that you would take orders. And I see a lot of these preachers out there. Well, I'm an ex-Marine, and I'm an ex-this, and I'm an ex-that. And all of a sudden, the state comes in, and they're up there, and they're saying, Nobody tells me what to do in my pulpit. Amen. And, blah, 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 and they're yelling. And all of a sudden, the government comes along and says, Shut your church down. They say, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. Is it because they're a man or is it because they had their manliness taken from them when they went in through the military? I wonder. I'm going to say something here. I have to speak foolishly for just a minute. And I'm not trying to say this in pride, but take it as it is. Nobody has ever got in my face and cussed me out. Nobody. Ever. I wouldn't take it. I'm not a brawler. Not a striker. I'm a very nice guy. I'm a big guy, but I don't pick fights. I don't want to get into fights. I see people and whatever else and things and some here comes some nut guy into this. I'll get go the other way or whatever else. But nobody has ever come up to me and cussed in my face or blasphemed my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I just stand there and take it. Not happening. Some guy ever come up, some DI or whatever else, come up and try to get in my face? No, that doesn't happen. I'm a free man. You aren't going to take my rights away by having me stand on the little footprints on the pavement there and everything else and then just come and start screaming at me. No, I don't think so. I've been around work, secular work and whatever else. I've heard the profanity. I've heard the whatever else and stuff. But you know what? You can witness to those guys and you can tell them off and you can get in arguments with them. And I have in the past. And whatever. And there's nobody going to come and say, hey, you, you know, you're not following orders, soldier. You give up your rights when you become a soldier. And I'll tell you what else. I believe you give up your manhood. Biblical, scriptural, spiritual manhood. Well, they taught me how to kill and I can go, I could come there, Denling, and I could rip you to pieces. I could kill you. Well, congratulations. Now you're a mindless uh, killer. Congratulations. <laughs> what does that prove? As soon as you get that order. Snap to attention, soldier. But continuing, verse 4, Isaiah 59, verse 4. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for, pleadeth for truth. 
They trust in vanity they, and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Hey, I'm seeing a bunch of stuff here. Um, well, I'm just just do your job, man. Just keep your head down. Keep your nose to the grindstone. Don't don't bother other people. They won't bother you. Don't rock the boat. Don't. You're in the military. You know what I'm talking about. There are certain things that you just don't talk about. You just kind of keep quiet and, and whatever else and things. And you see some superior doing whatever else. And you just kind of, I'll keep my mouth shut about it. The Bible's describing you right here. They hatch cockatrices' eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Their webs shall not become garments, neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Remember reading a book at one time about Vietnam, and, and um, they're going down across, and they, there's these people working out in the rice paddy. Civilians, not enemy combatants, civilians. And they said, let's do some target practice. Swing the M60 around, mounted machine gun in the, in the side of the, the old uh, Apache, I think it was, helicopter. And, and this guy is a commanding officer, Daniel, Daniel Marvin. I think I have his book. It might be here, it might be somewhere else. And, and he says, what are you doing? You know, Lieutenant Colonel. And he's saying, what are you doing? Stop. Those were civilians. What are you doing? And they're laughing about it. They thought it was funny. I saw a video years ago of a family driving a minivan through a checkpoint, and they didn't stop quite right or whatever, and they, they shot them to pieces. I think it was Afghanistan. Just a few years ago, and they were laughing about it. They said, you shouldn't bring children to a war zone. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. How about the soldiers in Vietnam that would go and cut off private parts of the enemy soldiers and put them on a necklace and wear them around their necks? And you'll be part of this, huh? I'm a Christian. I just kind of look the other way. It doesn't, you know, that doesn't bother me. Really? Their feet run to evil and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. Uh, we, we came over here and we're going to use nuclear active, or excuse me, radioactive nuclear waste for ammunition. Because when you shoot it at high velocity, it gets really hot and it goes right through armor plate on a tank. It's great. It's wonderful. What's it do on the battlefield? Well, it makes it toxic and the, and the people that live there, their children come out deformed and our soldiers that go through it, they die in a few years after, you know, coming home from combat. But it's wonderful. Geneva Convention is passed. World War II. Hey, you know what? You're not allowed to. Uh, you're not allowed to firebomb cities. I remember there was a soldier actually in Tokyo. He was a prisoner of war, and all of a sudden, Tokyo is being firebombed. Little children are running down the streets screaming, and they're on fire, burning to death, screaming. And this soldier, he said, "Who would do a thing like this?" And the Japanese commanders in the prison said, "Your country." America. Oh, the ones that passed the Geneva. Oh, we, what, you, you're not allowed to firebomb. You're not allowed to use napalm on people, civilian population. Oh, but we're going to. Just look the other way. <sighs> oh, what's going on over there? It looks like you're using something illegal. Oh, this? No, don't worry about it. World War II, when people had better morals than they do today. And you're okay with that. That's okay as a Christian. Murdering civilians. Horrible stuff. Hey, you can get saved. If you're a soldier, you can come to Lord broken. You should. And just say, okay, Lord, I can't walk away because that's going AWOL. Um, but uh, you know what? I need to get out of here. Don't, you know, come out and try to pull a big thing. I'm going to come out and tell the truth because then they'll pull a Pat Tillman on you. <laughs> Oh, uh, fratricide, you know, oh, we, oh, we just mistakenly shot him in the head. We didn't know who he was. It, it was foggy that morning. Oh, we, we didn't really know. It, it, we just told him, you know, hey, going up on that hill and him and, his, and the other guy and going up on that hill and things and, oh, he's up there. Okay, well, shooting the guy, shooting him in pieces, big football star. He's going to come home and tell what was going on, the, the corruption he was seeing in the military. 
thought he was a celebrity, thought he could get away with it. You know, uh, he also rejected Jesus Christ. I'd like to mention that. If you watch the Tillman stuff about Pat Tillman, he was a Christ-rejecting, God-hating sinner. Even his own brother at the at the funeral, he said, he said, if you believe in God, he said, uh, my brother's in hell because he didn't believe in God. I mean, absolute truth. Sad, sad. What a waste. What a wasted life. Joining this wicked crusading Vatican controlled army and I'm talking any branch of the military too I think he was an army ranger but the, any branch of the military ultimately controlled by the Vatican don't even talk to me about it what's the Vatican been doing for centuries crusades against who Islam what's the American modern American military doing crusade against Islam hmm Verse uh, 8. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Let me read that again. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. You're a Christian. The peace that passeth understanding you're supposed to have as a born-again believer, and yet the Bible says those wicked, crooked nation that's going out and doing all this stuff, running to, to shed innocent blood and everything else, you're not, you're not going to know peace. Well, brother, I, I'm, not, I'm not part of the, I'm not frontline combat duty. I'm, uh, I'm in administration and stuff and whatever else. Yeah, and how's it go there? How's it go with the uh, fornication that goes on there in the military, which I'll be getting to here in just a couple minutes. Um, how's, how's it go with all that stuff and all the scheming and all the, the, the you know, um, administrative loopholing and things like this? Well, we didn't use as much here in this budget, so we'll just take from this budget and put over to here and, and everything else. We'll just tell the American taxpayer that we need more money for the military and whatever else and our expenditures over here. And you just you shift the books around. My wife worked in some of that stuff when she was in. You know, my wife, if you don't know, if you're a new viewer to this channel, my wife was in two branches of the military, was in Iraq. Uh, before she got saved. Um, so, I've heard the stories, okay? I've read the stories. I've heard the stories. I've talked to people from different branches of the military. I know about the corruption. And what about the scheming that's going on? We're not supposed to be entangled in foreign affairs. as That's the way our military was supposed to be founded here in America. And yet we have soldiers that are in all different countries and things and scheming like crazy. Hmm. Turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to give you the second reason. First reason is no man can serve two masters. You get into the military for a while, you will figure out very quickly that it's all about money. I remember a famous uh, line from the All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric uh, Ramire, Remarque, or whatever, the famous novel about uh, the life of uh, Paul Bauer or Brenner or something. Forgive me, I don't can't remember some of that stuff, but... Um, All Quiet on the Western Front, a book that was written about World War I from the standpoint of a German infantry soldier. And I remember the one time they're there waiting to go into battle, and, and uh, one of the soldiers stands up and he says, if all men had the same, uh, the same work and the same pay, the war would be over and done in a day. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, very true. Uh, the people in higher up military positions, uh, they're having, they're making decisions and things and, and they're tied in with different financial interests and whatever else. You get into Halliburton and, and uh, some of the different military weapons, you know, uh, Boeing and, and uh, Lockheed Martin and, and some of these others and whatever else. There's financial interests all through the military. And you get the right contacts and whatever else and you kind of get advanced a little bit quicker in your career, if you know what I mean. And uh, you kind of look the other way when you see certain things. And again, you get a little advancement there. And, uh huh. Yeah. And you can just be part of that as a Christian. Right. Right. But the reason, the second reason why no Christian can be in the military is uh, because of female officers. This is more of a recent one. You know, you couldn't have said this in the past. There weren't women in the military. But nowadays, female officers. 
First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 through 12. Let the, women, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. You say, well, that's talking about the church. It's talking about the church. Okay, well, then think about it this way. How about a young Christian woman? What if she wants to go into the military? What if she gets advanced above men and she has to give them orders? How would that work? So there's problem number one. But uh, problem number two is, you study the Bible, women didn't have high up positions throughout the scriptures. So, yes, I understand that this passage here, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, is speaking specifically of while the saints are assembled. You compare it to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It, you see it there, too, towards the end of the chapter. But the point is, God's system here is men in authority, men in positions of power, kings, not women ruling as queens. Right? Whenever you get women into positions of power, you have problems. You have trouble. But what do you do when you're a man? You're in the military and you say, you know, I need to do something or other. And all of a sudden here comes some woman and she's stalking toward you. Captain so-and-so and she gets in your face and she says, What are you doing, soldier? What do you think you're doing? Yelling at you. What are you going to do as a Christian man? Snap to attention. You know, what do you even, I don't even know what you say. Yes, ma'am. Or yes, sir. Yes, you know, thing, whatever you are. How about, the, you know, and I could really make a point on the thing of modest apparel, women wearing modest apparel in the, in the military. Yeah, right. Uh, who's fooling who? Um, it's wicked. It's wicked. Some woman ruling over you. I mean, give me a break. How do you do that if you're saved? Female superior officer. What are you going to do? Submit to her authority? You call yourself a Christian? 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 14 through 15. I will therefore that the young women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully, for some are already turned aside after Satan. Well, I think a good way to be turned aside after Satan is to join the military if you're a young woman. Because you're not going to be able to do those three things there. Marry, bear children, guide the house. How can you do that when you're in the military? You're, you have a career. You're there for God and country. Doing your duty. Really? I don't think so. It's wicked. And the third reason, and I could do a whole big study on this thing, but the third reason is forced sin. I didn't say sin, I said forced sin. It's forced on you. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 through 32. For a Christian, you want to join the military? Which one are you going to follow? The military, it's all about money or the uh, word of God? Which authority is greater? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 through 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. How? <laughs> How? If you're in the military. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. In the military? How? Hey, um, <clears throat> uh, Sergeant, I just had to get my gun. Soldier! Uh, what? You said gun. I want you to repeat this. It's your weapon. And I won't go through the thing. I've talked to Marines. I know what they say. You're supposed to grab the private area and say, gun. I won't even go through the thing because I don't want to defile the minds of my viewers if you don't know what I'm talking about. But you're supposed to say something perverse about your genitalia 
to say it that way. You're supposed to say something perverse about it. You're forced to say it by your commanding officer if you say gun instead of weapon. What do you do as a Christian? Young men out there that wants to, they want to go into the military? You want to be a tough, rough, tough Marine? Really? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Well, sorry, Lord, I'm sorry. I'd, I'd sure like to submit to your word, but I can't because I'm under orders. I gave away my rights when I got off the bus and came here to the recruitment center or whatever else. I'm, I'm here, Lord. I got to join. I got to serve you. I'm going to serve God and country. I thought the Bible said, Jesus Christ said, you can't serve two masters. Well, no, no, God and country, not God and mammon. Okay, what's your country run by? God or money? Why is your country over here at this war doing this or doing that because of money? They're not serving Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 3. Verse 5, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication, out of your mouth, there it is again, Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You say, well, see there, there, when you become a soldier, that's the new man. I'm no longer a recruit. I'm now a private or a whatever, corporal or something. Uh, no, because the deeper you get into the military, the more you have to compromise your relationship to Jesus Christ. Don't even tell me about it. The more you've had to turn the other way and not and just kind of ignore this and ignore that. First Corinthians chapter six. I saw a particular word there in that passage in uh, Colossians chapter three. Uh, verse five. Fornication. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 through 20. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are property of the United States Marine Corps. Uh, United States Marine what? Corps? C-O-R-P-S? Uh, kind of like uh, corpse? Who was it that's a military order and says we're corpses for Christ? Oh, who was that? Yeah, I think it was the Jesuits. Uh, the Marine Corps that is uh, designed and patterned after the Jesuits. The breaking down of the mind, putting down of yourself, and saying, uh, for the greater glory of God, for God and country. I'll do whatever I'm told to do by my superiors, without thinking, without blinking, without whatever. Hmm. But how about that fornication issue? I remember, and I'm sorry to, I'll, I'll just say this, try to be as, you know, good with this as I can, but, uh, there was a, I forget what country it was, maybe it was France or something else, and they said about the American soldiers in World War II, World War II, nearly 100 years ago, and they said the problem with American soldiers is three things, overpaid, oversexed, and over here. That's what they said. I've studied a lot about the military. I've read a lot of books on it. Um, there's fornication. There's been fornication in the military for a long time. A very long time. Don't tell me that there's righteousness in the military. I don't want to even hear about it. Um, again, my wife has told me the stories. So many different men that were military men cheating on their wives. Extramarital relationships one right after another. Happens all the time. Um, 
years ago at a Baptist church, a, a guy there, his daughter joined the military, and uh, all of a sudden she becomes with child. Just a common thing in the military. Happens a lot. I've heard a lot of uh, sodomy, forced sodomy being done in the military. Uh, they'll take a soldier and a bunch of guys will get together and they'll gang rape one of the soldiers. Happens a lot. And you want to join that, huh? You want to join that. Don't ask, don't tell. All these other ungodly things that they have in the military. And you're just going to be there and you're going to see that. You're going to be part of it and swearing your allegiance to it. I'm just following orders, sir, and I don't have anything else to say. You can't be part of it. If you're saved, your body belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. You're bought with a price. You don't go and give your life to some wicked organization that's going to send you into wars that are being fought to centralize power and get money coming in. You can't do that and be right with God. Period. Um, you say, well, I just, I'm in the military. I just got saved not long ago. Okay, then, then do what you can to get out. All right. Um, you can't, you know, the thing with the military, you've gone in by their route. You have to come out. Uh, start working on that. Um, get out of there with an honorable discharge, whatever, you know, dishonorable discharge, not so good, you know. Um, but, you know, get out of it. Uh, well, you know, okay, brother, I, I just, I don't have much longer to go, though. I'm just about at retirement. Okay, tell the Lord that. You want the Lord's blessing in your life? Then take a very harsh attitude towards sin. The Lord's convicted you, then you better get out. So, talking to my wife about this and I said what would you add to this um, I'll just kind of go through some of her points here that she wrote down because she had quite a few she was in the military for a while uh, two different branches uh, gender confusion masculine 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 women and effeminate men that's another thing that will happen to you when you get into the military women ruling over men and uh, we'll see some of that too um, of course women working outside the home you know, the wax, the uh, back in the WACS is what I'm talking about, back with World War II, women being encouraged to leave the home. Your country needs you. You know, you hear the old songs and, you know, Uncle Sam needs you. You know, uh, what can I do for Uncle Sam? You know, go to the war effort, join the war effort, go down to the factory and work. Oh, and uh, by the way, the war's over. But hey, since you're in the factory, you might as well just stay. Now you have two incomes. You have much more money. You can have a better life and... Women in the workforce, the families start to break up. Hmm. And who was it that uh, caused this whole thing? That would be the military. The military that there are Christians that defend being in it. Spirit of competition, pride, envy, strife because of athletics. There's competition within the military. Yeah. The Army-Navy game and things like that, you'll hear that. There's a lot of that type of stuff. Pride. Pride is just, I mean, the pride and the military go hand in hand. You know, you see these guys, you know, the Marine Corps or whatever, veterans and things, and they have the just Marines all over their vehicle and stuff. A little bit of pride there. Um, Roman Catholic kingdom building via false flag wars and conflicts. conflicts. Yeah, she's right. She found that stuff out. Um, service members are pharmaceutical guinea pigs. Roll up your sleeve, soldier. It's time for vaccination. Um, uh, it's an order, soldier. And it goes. And I mean, you can do the document. You can look up for the documents and things. Uh, there was a, a a video that came out years ago, documentary. Um, it was uh, Hidden Wars of Desert Storm, I think is what it was called. And they detailed how that under the Clinton administration, they actually passed a law whereby the pharmaceutical companies could use, literally use the soldiers to try out experimental vaccines. So she's not just messing around there. And then she got vaccinated a bunch of times when she was in the military. She still has a scar on her arm from one of the vaccines. It didn't quite work out so good. Disgusting. Rampant perversion. Another thing my wife listed here. All the time. She was telling me, she's told me stories of stuff that went on in the military and just, wow, 
It's bad. If you're in the military, you know. You know it's been going on for, for years. You know? Read the stories of the soldiers in Vietnam. They get they get some R and R, you know, and, and they go off to Saigon to the whorehouses and they're just fornication, 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 fornication. Worked with a guy that knew a uh, man that was in Vietnam, a, a Vietnam veteran, and he talked about his times with different prostitutes and whatever. Happens all the time. Integration is accepted and promoted for advancement. They aren't going to go against, you know, uh, aren't going to talk about segregation and things like that. They used to back in World War II, but now it's integration, you know. Um, a lot of the drill and ceremony and things and a lot of the ranks and whatever else are very similar to Freemasonry, she said here. And, and you know, I've actually heard that uh, some of the higher level... Um, rankings and things like that you have to get into freemasonry to get into some of that stuff um, there's a lot of the stuff she has written here and it's yeah you know but that takes it into a whole different you know uh whole different realm of you know i can't get into here <laughs> but uh perversion or excuse me pacifism through oath making keeping and fear uh, in other words, keeping your oath and whatever else in fear, you, you know, you become, you actually become a pacifist after a while uh, in the military as a soldier because you see things, you see corruption, and you just keep your mouth shut about it. It's a good point. Um, ecumenical church building services. Yeah. How many really strong uh, military chaplains are there? Bible believing chaplains. I don't think so. Um, rules are meant to be broken as needed. It's easier to ask forgiveness than it is to ask permission. I had a Marine sergeant tell me that the one time. Yeah. Um, everyone, regardless of position, is expendable. I mean, literally, the, the guy, Lieutenant Colonel Dan Marvin, uh, got saved after coming out of the military. He was a Green Beret commander in Vietnam, and his book is called Expendable Elite. They were in uh, actually conducting operations over the border into Cambodia, I think it was, and they were told that they wanted to assassinate a CIA man from the you know came in and said we want you to assassinate the president of Cambodia because we want to carry this war up into Cambodia and things and centralize more of our you know drug ops and stuff black op type of stuff, and he said no I'm not going to do that. And the CIA guy got mad and he left and he, and he went back and he said, next thing you know, that they're, they're getting word that uh, they're sending a whole you know, detachment of some military, I forget, Army, Marines, whatever, because of a Green Beret unit that went rogue. No, he was just trying to keep his country from going into more war, needless war, where men would be killed. But the CIA, the guys behind the scenes, the black op world, uh, they came out and they said, we're going to, you know, kill you because you've gone rogue. He's expendable. So he wrote the book, Expendable Elite. You can look that book up. Very interesting read. I thank the Lord the guy got saved. Um, actually, knew Peter Ruckman. It was kind of interesting. Daniel uh, Marvin knew Peter Ruckman um, years after he got saved and everything else. Um she has here, the whole system is communism cloaked in fascism. Well, I understand that again because, you you know, all the soldiers are there, you're communal living, and, and you all have the same pay, and you eat the same food, and you dress the same way, and whatever. Well, that's communism, essentially. Um, and cloaked in fascism, yeah. True, too. Um, uh, being politically incorrect, political incorrectness leads to psycho psychological evaluation, command-directed, um, because you're hurting morale and cohesion, you know. In other words, you start to, to question things and say, hey, wait a second here. This doesn't seem right to me. Soldier, you need to be quiet. Uh, come into my office. I need to talk to you, soldier. And you go in there and you say, hey, this is wrong. This goes against my morals. Okay, we're going to have to send you down for a psychological evaluation. I think that there's some problems here and whatever else. That's what happens to you if you speak up, if you tell the truth in the military. Well, like we were reading in the scriptures. So what do you do? You become passive. You're in there and you just say, well, I just have to you know, go along to get along and I'm just going to keep my mouth shut and just keep my head down and just do what I'm supposed to do. 
like the Nazis, and the death camps. Hey, you know, we probably shouldn't be killing God's chosen people here, the Jewish people, but uh, hey, I'm just following orders. Okay, come on into the gas chamber here. We're going to murder some more of you. It's not, I'm not for this personally, but I'm just following orders. I don't have a choice. I'm a soldier. I'm supposed to follow orders. Uh, it goes against my conscience, goes against my beliefs, but uh, come on in here. Okay. Oh, they're, oh they, they got killed. Oh, I hate to see that, but just following orders, sir. And then she finally has here, teamwork and friendship are a mirage. If you leave dishonorably, on the other hand, people turn on you like a wolf pack. Everyone is out for themselves. <laughs> That's what she has written there. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. I remember the, I've seen, you know, different people talking about, you know, the modern military is a joke. It's all about career advancement and everything else. Well, I mean, why do you want to go into this stuff? I mean, you can, you know, trust me. You know, I'm a preacher, a minister of God called to preach the word of God. And the Lord had me study. But I mean, we were literally required to read books. Uh, from soldiers in high school. Um, can't think of the one. Uh, Philip Caputo was the guy's name. And uh, just filthy profanity through the whole thing. It's a real good thing to force me to read in high school, public high school, Peckway Valley High School, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Um, cannot think of the name of that book right now. But, you know, I read it. And I've read books since then. I've read a lot of different books from soldiers, men that have been there, that have fought the battles, that have, that were there in, in horrible, bloody combat, and they just come back, and it's just their mind is forever shattered. And I read some of that stuff, and I thought, you know, in high school there, you know, oh, hello, you, know, you get the phone call, you know, and, hello, Mr. Denlinger, this is Brian Denlinger here. Uh, yes, you know. Oh, uh, well, my name is Sergeant, you know, Steve Watkins or something from... Uh, you know, the Marine Corps here, we'd like to have you uh, in the military, I think. Would you like to do your service to your country? No, thank you. Click. <laughs> you know, no, I don't want to go through that stuff. Uh, I don't want to have to, and I wasn't even saved when I got out of high school, but I had enough sense. I'm not going to go in there and have them just cussing up a storm and, and getting me involved in a bunch of wars that are just ridiculous. I mean, how many battles I read about in Vietnam where the guys went in and they said, okay, we can take this hill, we can do this, whatever else, and they're just in there just fighting and just blood and guts and, you know, just arms blown off, heads severed and, and just blood and guts and everything all around and they fight again the next day and they fight again and they fight again and they finally take the hill and they, oh, we finally won, we have victory. Commanding officer comes in and he says, okay, men, good job, everybody, okay, we're pulling out. We're pulling out? What, uh, huh? We're pulling out? What are you talking about? We just fought for the hill. We just took it. Killed all the Viet Cong and whatever else. Got them out of their little you know, tunnels and things that they had. We're pulling out? Yes. That's what you know. The command directed it. Doesn't make sense, I know, men, but we have to follow orders. <laughs> because the bankers that are ruling us, the Vatican bankers that are ruling us, would like to make more money on the drug trade, and we have to go and, and do this and do that and whatever else. And they go away, and a month later... Um, we're being ordered to go back down to that same valley and take that same hill now that the enemies come back in and they're back there. And these guys are saying, what was all the fighting for? I lost my best friend from high school in that fight, in that war. What did I lose him for? We took the hill. He died for his country. And now I have to go back again? We left, and I have to go back and do it all over again. What's going on? Uh, sir, what are we fighting for? I wonder how many times that's been asked over the years by soldiers. I pray the Lord rebukes any of you out there that are in the military yet, professing to be a Christian. Especially if you're trying to tell young men to join the military. God have mercy on you. You make me sick. Quite frankly, you make me sick. Um, your mind has been seriously warped. If you can tell a young man, especially if you could tell a young woman, yeah, I think the military would be good for you. I think overall, yeah, you, you have problems. You have serious problems if, you've, if you're telling people that. 
Um, if I see any of that again in the future, I'm going to just tell you, I don't care who you are. I don't care what nice things you've written to me or whatever else. You're gone. I'm going to delete your comments and you're blocked. I'm not going to put up with it. Um, I've never done a study like this before where I've, I've said some things condemning the military. The modern military is not about fighting for this country. Not at all. It's about mammon. It's about money. Um, so I can't really blame people and say, well, you know, whatever, whatever. You, you know my stands. Well, you didn't know my stands. I've said little snippets here and there, but I've never actually come out and actually done a study. And there's so many more scriptures I could have used, too, to condemn the military thing. Um, if you were in the military in the past, well, okay, fine, whatever. But don't get prideful about it. Don't go around with your little special shirts on with the military insignia and whatever. Lord, forgive me for that stuff that I was part of, that evil that I was part of. Um, it's terrible. It's terrible. If you lost friends in battle, they died in vain. They didn't die for this country. They didn't die to keep America free. I mean, we're over there in Afghanistan. What's that doing? You know, Iraq. Ira Operation Iraqi Freedom. Oh. For what? I thought a lot of the guys that flew the airplanes into the buildings on 9-11, I thought they were Saudi Arabian. <laughs> yeah, but we tracked them down and we found them in, in Iraq and Afghanistan, the, the other terrorists. Okay, um, there's so many problems with this whole thing. It's just it's disgusting. So don't hate you if you were in the military. I don't I don't hate you as a as a military veteran. Far from it. Um, but you have to come to terms. You have to come to grips with what you've been part of. Um, all of us do. All of us have sins in our past that we can look back and say, Oh boy, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have been part of that. Um, so whatever. Uh, if you're a young person, don't even consider going into the military. It's terrible. It's a really bad decision. But when it really comes down to it, if this is your standard, you'll submit here. You don't have to care about my words or whatever else. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.